I happen to be a lover of archery. But I don't like archery for killing things. I like it as a sport. But what I like most of all is to set an arrow free, like it were a bird. You know, when he gets far up in the sky, whee! You watch it. And it suddenly turns and drops. What is it that fascinates us about that? Because it's not useful. It doesn't really achieve anything that we would call purposive work. It simply is what we call play. But in our culture, we make an extremely rigid division between work and play. You're supposed to work in order to earn enough money to give you sufficient leisure time for something entirely different called having fun or play. Imagine, too, if you were a bus driver. Bus driver is ordinarily, ordinarily considered an absolutely harassed person. He's got to watch out for all the laws, all the competing traffic, uh, the cops, the people coming on board giving their fares, and he has to give them change. And if he has it in his head that this is work, it will be hell. But let's suppose he has a different thing in his head. Supposing he has the idea that moving this enormous conveyance through complicated traffic is a very, very subtle game. And he has the same feeling about it that you might have if you were playing the guitar or uh, dancing. And so he goes through that traffic, avoiding this and avoiding that, and taking a fare like this, and he, he makes a music of the whole thing. Well, he's not going to be tired out at the end of the day. He's going to be full of energy when he gets through his job. The art of washing dishes is that you only have to wash one at a time. If you're doing it day after day, you have in your mind's eye an enormous stack of filthy dishes which you have washed up in years past and an enormous stack of filthy dishes which you will wash up in years future. But if you bring in your mind to the state of reality, which as is, as I've pointed out to you, only now, this is where we are. There is only now. You only have to wash one dish. It's the only dish you'll ever have to wash, this one. You ignore all the rest, because in reality, there is no past and there is no future. There is just now. So you wash this one. And instead of thinking, have I got it really clean, as my mother taught me with an angry voice, that I had to get every little scrap of it, you know, and she got, ah! got angry at you. Instead, you turn the cleaning movement into a dance. like this. And you dig that. And you swing that plate around. And you let the rinsing water go over it. And you put it off in the rack. Crazy. See? Take the next one. And you get this rhythm going. See? And you, you're not under compulsion all the time. You know, when I was a little boy and went to school in England, I had to learn the piano. They called it playing the piano. But actually, they said, you must play. We had in England compulsory games. They used to post notices on the bulletin board in the school where I went to, which said, uh, this afternoon, everyone will go for a run. And if you didn't go for a run, and you, it was found out that you hadn't, you were flogged. So everybody hated going for a run because they were under compulsion to play. Everybody must play. It's like the whole game of life we're all involved in. It's only a game, but everybody has got to belong. So we went running. I remember one day I was out on a run, and I was trying to enjoy myself because I was running on the balls of my feet, dancing along. And a fellow came up behind me who was running on his heels. He was jogging. 
and he was going clump, 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 clump. And I said to him, what's the matter with you? You're running on your heels, and you're jarring your whole body all the way through. Okay, but he stuck to it, and he became the champion long-distance runner of the school. But he didn't enjoy it. It was work. And all he enjoyed was the suffering that he endured that made him feel that he had really contributed to the human race because he suffered so much. He identified his existence and his worth with his suffering. Now, really great runners dance when they run. They don't necessarily, necessarily follow a straight course. They may weave. And in the same way, if you happen to witness in the year 1970, the World Cup Championship in Soccer, you would have seen that the winning team from Brazil played soccer in the most extraordinary way. They played it like basketball. They played it dancing. The way we learned soccer in school when I was a boy was very, very formal and orderly, and we didn't really enjoy it. But these fellows were bouncing balls off their shoulders, off every muscle, and uh, they, they had ex astonishing teamwork, but at the same time were dancing the game, and the sports writer in the London Times said that they danced their way to victory. So the point is, therefore, that you can do everything you have to do in this spirit. Don't make a distinction between work and play. Regard everything that you're doing as play, and don't imagine for one minute that you've got to be serious about it. Let's take, for example, the rest of the world, other than ourselves. Think for a moment, what are vegetables doing? Let's, uh, for example, consider this. And what's it all about? I mean, it serves us, human beings, by being decorative. But what is it from its own point of view? See, because here is this stalk, and all these leaves come out. Ka-ching, 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 ka all the way to the top, and it whoops, it goes into this. And then it goes into flowers in the end, you see, and they go, kitty, 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 all around. <laughs> but I look at the thing, and it's like a symphony. It's just like Bach doing a fugue with all the different movements going. And that's what it's about. Well, you say, uh, it's using up air, it's using up energy, it's uh, really not doing anything except being ornamental. And yet here's the whole vegetable world. Not only cactus plants like this, but all trees, roses, tulips, and uh, edible vegetables, cabbages, celery, lettuce, they're all doing this dance. And what is it all about? Why do they do it? Well, we say, one must live. It's necessary to survive. You know, you really must go on. It's your, it's your duty. It's your duty to your children. But you see, the thing I feel is if you bring up your children that way and tell them that they ought to be grateful to you because you're doing your duty towards them, they will learn to bring up their children in the same way, and everybody will be depressed. There really is no necessity to go on living. We think, you know, it's part of our Western philosophy, that we think we have a drive to survive, that we must go on living. Because some big daddy said to us, you got to go on living, see? And you better make it or else. Well, I've already explained to you on this show that there is, the fear of death is completely absurd. Because if you're dead, you've got nothing to worry about. So you'll be...